You've probably came across Axios and probably use it in projects if you're familiar with making HTTP requests over the web. Other libraries include Got, SuperAgent, and NodeFetch. There are many other request libraries that allow you to make requests over the web, and we can do that with GraphQL. In this episode, we'll have a look at using the Fetch API that is now widely supported and adopted by most browsers. And if you revert to the Node Fetch polyfill, you can use that in a Node.js environment as well. But in this case, we will use the standard Fetch API to make a request to our GraphQL server. Let's get started by defining a endpoint for our GraphQL server. I'll use api.cartql.com, but you can use any GraphQL server endpoint that you have. Then we'll go ahead and create a query, and this query will include some GraphQL variables. Check the episode on GraphQL variables if you haven't used those before. We'll pass the ID into the variables, and we'll pass an ID for the cart that we want to fetch. And then we will stringify the body, and this is important. We must pass the query, and the optional variables. Then we'll go ahead and define our request, and this will be a request using the fetch API. And as the first argument, we'll pass in the endpoint, and then as the second options, we'll pass in the method post, and we'll set some optional headers, but it's recommended that you set the content type to application JSON when interacting with GraphQL. Then we need to pass the body, that is the stringified query and variables. Because request is a promise, we need to, on the callback, then transform the response to JSON using res.json, and then we will get the JSON of our response. We can then destructure a data and log that to the console. While this works with queries, we can also use GraphQL mutations as well. So we'll keep everything as is, but we'll update the query constant to be a mutation. And we'll call a GraphQL mutation that is part of the CartQL API, that is add item. So we'll pass in an ID to our mutation add to cart, and we'll pass that ID along to the mutation input argument. Then we'll go ahead and retrieve some of the things of our cart, including the items, the name, the quantity, total unit price, etc. And then if we go ahead and instantiate that fetch request, you'll see that that mutation is performed successfully. Just like we did with fetch, if we revert to using Axios and import the Axios library from NPM, we can invoke that in the same way as we did the fetch library. However, obviously the signature changes for each of these libraries. So we'll rename fetch to Axios, and then we'll pass a object to that function. And then we'll pass in endpoint as URL, and then the body will rename to data. Then to run the request, the response will automatically be transformed to JSON. So we can remove that part here, and then we can just log the data that is returned to us. So as you can see, you can use the Fetch API to make requests to your GraphQL server without installing any third-party library. Of course, this doesn't include any kind of caching, so that's when you might default to using some GraphQL client. 